Thank you. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi. Hello. All right, quick show of hands. Uh, hey, hi, everybody. Hope everybody's having a good <laughs> afternoon. Um, but who, who has eaten Kraft mac and cheese in the room? <laughs> right? <laughs> Pretty iconic brand. Uh, and I was corrected. I thought it was a 75-year-old brand. It's an 85-year-old brand. Um, iconic, huge penetration, huge share, and time for a refresh. Time for a refresh. <laughs> <laughs> so as we talk about modernization and, uh, and taking a very established, um, iconic brand such as Kraft Macaroni and Cheese and updating it, um, why now? And tell us a little bit about what you did. Yeah, absolutely. So 85 years old, one billion dollar brand, mm -hmm. it's challenging to say, I'm going to shake this up, <laughs> right? Like, I'm going to change what we're doing here. So right before COVID, I will tell you, thank you everyone that's bought mac and cheese during COVID. <laughs> I cannot make enough of it. It's amazing. Um, but before COVID, what we started to see was household penetration was starting to slip a little bit. And our preference and devotion measures were slipping, right? Mm -hmm. Which, those are the biggest ones you want to keep. So we said, okay, what's changing here? Because as Kraft Heinz, we own 77% of the category, right? So what's happening, you know, recently that's changing things? And it's really, you know, eating trends have changed, right? Um, we've got some new competitors that have come into the market, rightly so. And we just haven't really kept up with the time. So we said, okay, we've got to do something here. So we went on a journey with our consumers, um, <laughs> uh, quite a journey, and really decided we needed to shift to be more relevant to a broader group of people. So when we think about who's eating mac and cheese, we kind of made it a kid food, because we always said, this is for kids. Ride your kids at dinner time. They'll eat if you have mac and cheese on the table. However, 50% of our consumers are families without kids. Right? So it's like, why aren't we talking to them? So that was really kind of our jumping off point was we have to build our relevancy for this brand and bring it into the new age versus 85 years ago. And then that kind of sparked everything we did from there. So from our consumer targeting to our purpose and then pulling our new purpose through, everything that we're doing is where we're bringing Kraft Mac and Cheese for the tomorrow. Very good. And, and you mentioned penetration slipping and only 77% share of, of the category. <laughs> How did you guys balance that risk assessment of modernizing a brand at this time? Like, why now? Yeah, it's a great question. So the why now is because it's always easy to ignore a one-point slip in household penetration or my joke not that funny but 100 percent awareness went to 99 and you're like who's the one person that's not aware right like, there's that one percent that really is not aware of crap mac and cheese but what happens is when we ignore those things they keep slipping right so it's really the marketer's job to say now is the time that we have to get ahead of this so that 10 years from now we're not sitting here really in trouble and not able to kind of turn that brand around so on our journey, we've been extremely conscious of honoring our history, honoring our roots. I mean, that, the brand was developed literally here in Illinois and not abandoning where we are, right? So I say we're broadening our relevance. We're not walking away from families with kids, right? There's still half of our volume, but we have to broaden that out. So it's really about not jumping too far, I'm calling it more of an evolution. So even though we're, we're changing all touch points, it's really about evolving the brand and driving that relevancy and engagement versus total revolution where people go, what did you do? And we kind of give you all the flash. And Dawn, I mean, we, um, you know, some of the folks probably haven't seen yes. some of the, the evolution yet yes. um, as it starts to turn on shelf. Let's see. So first, <laughs> <laughs> This is, this is one of our biggest things, right, is as we talk to consumers, everyone loves mac and cheese. They start to feel guilty, though, as they get to that adult age, and they'll say, eh, it's kind of kid food. And again, like, we created that, right? So we're moving from riding kids at dinner time to craft mac and cheeses for everyone. And here is uh, the first piece of our journey that will be out in market in January. You can see that the packaging has been massively updated in terms of modernization, driving taste appeal, getting away from the kid cues, 
and we also changed the name. Um, everyone calls it Mac and Cheese, so why are we calling it Macaroni and Cheese Dinner? So we've updated the name, um, and really kind of showing up in the icon. So one of the things that we kept hearing was, in a consumer's head, it's very iconic. I think I would call it an iconic product, maybe not an iconic brand. So where we're moving to is how do we really show up with emotion? So we've been very functional at this point, and I truly believe you need to have that emotional connection to keep people in, or else it's very easy to switch to another brand. So through our new pur purpose, which is all about um, comfort, um, <laughs> not surprising is the number one comfort food, but we're really trying to move the needle on the emotional side of things and show up as an icon. So when you look at the packaging, you can see like it is loud and proud, standing up strong. And as we exposed it to consumers, they just kept saying, it's so brave and it's so bright. Like it's, you know, like they recognize it's hard to move away from an old package that you love, but like that's great. And I feel like we really emphasize pieces of the packaging that people love, right? They, they love the iconic blue box. We you know, cleaned things up a bit so that it really is bold on shelf. Um, and we've emphasized our iconic noodle smile, and we've added this you know, delicious and a little bit cheeky drip. Um, it made it front and center. So really excited you know, to, to amplify what people really love about the brand and the box. You guys mentioned comfort a couple times and, and love the packaging. Um, from a comms side of things, how do you convey comfort and an evolution uh, as you build and start to look at evolving your own your media plans, but also just kind of how do you own an emotion, right? How do you convey? Yeah, so I think when we started our renovation, we did these in-depth consumer interviews. We talked to people that eat mac and cheese you know, a couple of times a week. We talked to people that eat mac and cheese every once in a while, and we talked to comfort food experts and tried to get to the bottom of what role does our brand actually play in their lives. And I think we constantly heard comfort, right? You think of mac and cheese, you think of it as a comfort food, but it's more than just you know, comfort at its face value. I think one of the stories that really struck with me from the very beginning was there was this mom who talked about how her kids have a hard enough life as it is and so when they come off that school bus, the one way she knows that she can make sure the rest of their day is a reset is to give them Kraft mac and cheese because it fills their bellies and makes them feel so much better. And it's more than, you know, you know, trying to talk to your kids or give them a hug. Like, she knows that she can give them mac and cheese and they know, you know, they're going to feel good for the rest of the day. So that positive power of comfort of when I do what feels good for me and bringing that and, and choosing that for myself, I can then be my best self in that butterfly effect um, of the room around you. We talked a lot about you know, people walking down a hallway and if you smile at someone, they immediately have a little bit brighter of a day. So how do we convey that to people in, in comms is definitely a major question that we are on a journey. We, we dipped our toes with our new spot that launched in November of 2021. Um, and, and I think it was a step in the right direction. It was definitely, you know, not just for households with kids. It was, you know, in this, this direction of trying to land that positive comfort. I think it was a dip our toes in, and I think Cindy would agree. Yeah. Um, and so we have a lot of exciting work here to go to really understand comfort so personal and looks so different for people. How do we land that, that transformational power of mac and cheese, of whatever mind state that you go into that eating session of eating your mac and cheese, you're in a little bit better spot when you're done with your mac and cheese. And so we're getting there. We're, we're definitely trying to understand how do you broaden your audience, also de-averaging the message to each and every one of them, um, and, and land this comfort point of view. So we have been on this journey for now a year and a half, two years, and I'm, I'm really excited about the work we have a year to go. So from a media perspective, we've really broadened who we're talking to. So it's not just households with kids, it's, it's you know, a much broader audience. We, we were trying to talk to people who are younger that do not necessarily have kids in their household yet, and how do you get them to come into the brand so that they'll continue to be lifelong users. <coughs> so from the media perspective, we've widened there. We've also embraced uh, something that was less traditional for craft times of not just you know embracing media, or TV as our main source of media, we, we've broadened our media mix. Um, and then we also have our new proprietary, you know, Craftomatic, um, which is basically helping us talk to consumers, taking in their data. How can we talk to them with the most 
relevant message to them. So that's the media perspective. There, there was a lot there. Uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, certainly on the on the media mix and the and the craft of man and ingesting um, what makes them tick, but just. <coughs> From a starting off point or a jumping off point, you know, looking at staying authentic to the brand. If you guys all of a sudden came out with messaging that was um, like some of the beer ads we saw this morning, right? It, it wouldn't have it wouldn't have screamed craft mac and cheese, right? You got to stay stay somewhat within your lanes while broadening your highway, if you will. That's exactly Bad right. Bad analogy, yeah. but um, so so media mix. You guys have long time craft in general has been a long time heavy TV buyer. Um, what's changing in the media mix, and um, how are you making that evolution up the up the channel? Yeah, so we are now looking at what what's what are the new ways that we can have more one-to-one -one connections with consumers and meet them with a as relevant as possible comfort message when they're in that moment. So I think you'll see, you know, we have we have a lot of exciting work here to go where you'll see this really come to life across more than just TV and social. Um, so that's, I think, the, the main piece is trying to do new things for the brand, meeting people where they might need a reminder of comfort. So if I'm on my commute home and I'm transitioning my brain from being in work mode to being at home, what is a message that we can help them in that moment to help shift their brain? Got it. Got it. Cindy, you made mention of um, kind of the brand and how do, you, how do you own the brand in a bigger way than being the product? Right. Um, talk a little bit about about that and your vision for the strategy and yeah. into the future. Um, can I swear? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, please, please do. It's French. Yeah, my internal line is I'm gonna blow shit up. <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, we have a billion dollar brand that sits in one aisle. You either go down the aisle or you don't go down the aisle, right? Why are we not showing up like an icon? Why are we not hitting consumers with comfort in the store as well as outside the store. So I can't tip my head in my hat totally, but I see this as a true master brand potential, right? Where we're expanding consumer in ways we talk and our positioning, right? Going away from just functional to emotional. Innovation, I mean, just go to TikTok and see how many times people are putting mac and cheese, like, in a quesadilla, on a hot dog, right? like, anything they can think of, mac and cheese goes in it. So I think this brand just has massive potential because there's so much love for it. When you talk to consumers, I would say, whether you're two or 92, there is love for craft mac and cheese. It's the first food that a lot of kids actually eat. A lot of kids are allowed to make themselves for the first time. And then all the way into empty nesters, they're going, nostalgia, kids are out, I'm still gonna grab mac and cheese, right? We need to now embrace that and own it and show up as that hero in the category and see if we can bring that beyond just one show. <laughs> be a, a show of hands if anybody tried it, uh, the ice cream. <laughs> all right, one. <laughs> there we go. I was gonna say, Leah, what do you think? How was it? It was unlike anything I'd ever <laughs> That was well done. <laughs> Honestly, I don't feel like it, it tasted totally like mac and cheese because you'd be surprised how sweet KMC actually is if you try it against something super salty. So it wasn't it wasn't wild. I I, I liked it actually. All right, very I good. It, I think it beats the mustard one. Yeah, it's the great coupon. Yeah, I would hope so. That's that's good. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> um, it, you made mention of first party data and, and data and pardon me, um, Craftomatic? Craftomatic. Craftomatic. All right. Um, tell us a little bit more about that. How are you, what are you doing to drive data in and then how are you using it on the output? Yeah. So I, I think someone else mentioned earlier, but the brand activations and, and how do you, the value exchange. So make sure if we're collecting their data, they're getting something from the brand in, um, in return. And so we've made it a priority as we do these fun brand activations. Um, you know, we had craft basketball. There's some other fun things that are going to happen here to go. Um, ensuring that we are making data capture as part of that experience and making sure that the consumer is getting something in return. And so as we're capturing all that data, we're trying to get smarter about who, how we're talking to people and making sure that we are serving the most relevant message to them. 
Um, so it, it's something that's very new. I, I've, I'm sure a lot of you, if you've read any press releases from Craft Times in the last like, year or so, you've heard mention of Craftmatic, but something very new that we're excited to continue to explore. And just a quick build on that, because I think it was brought up earlier, is first party data is hard for CPGs, right? We're not a natural source for purchasing directly. You know, I, I can't say I'd ever go to a website to, to buy mac and cheese, right? Yeah. So it's a really a journey that we're on, and that's where this, um, we have a whole new reorg with a central growth group, right, with a whole new internal agency that is building towards this. So I think it's part of our journey, you know, I think we're a little behind. Right? Like, let's be honest. So it's part of our journey to say, how do we show up in the world from a digital perspective? How do we collect that first party data? So there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes in terms of the infrastructure, getting better at selling through social media, right? Getting websites that are actually functional for the year 2022. <laughs> so it, it's quite a journey. I think we have struggled as much as everyone else has. Um, we just have focused so much on TV that now we have the shift to say, okay, we got to up our game here. And some of the some of the legacy of Food and Family and some of those um, some of those campaigns and, and activations that actually could churn out some data as well. Um, so, it, and you guys are both relatively uh, relatively new on the on the craft side. So, as you went in to blow shit up. Uh, <laughs> how was that received upward and you know, did, did they hire you to blow shit up or were it They did. <laughs> so, uh, they actually did. Um, there was a, a two years ago a new department started and specifically looking for people that, you know, had a more traditional branding and strategy background that could envision where brands could go ten years from now. So we were very lucky that at the time the leadership had changed over. So new chief growth officer, new CMO, uh, you know, lots of new people in roles that were very visionary and ready to change things. And that's where you see the journey that's happening at Crop Times. So um, I would say for the most part, people have gone on our journey. I, I like to use the word test and learn a lot because yes. then it doesn't scare people as much. <laughs> Very smart. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. Um, and you had talked about social media a little bit, um, and you know, social media obviously still having that that backbone in TV, but you know, digital being so fragmented and and so many different outlets and so many different approaches to take. Um, how has that been selling that in internally of doing things differently on the comm side and the media side? I feel like, as Cindy said, we had a change in leadership, so we've had full support um, to kind of blow things up there. Um, we now have an internal social agency um, that is called The Kitchen, and so they are now our agency of record for all of our brands um, for social. And so it's been really incredible being on the journey of, they tested it in 2021 with a couple of brands, including Kraft Mac and Cheese. Um, and then this has been the first full year, and as Cindy mentioned, we went through a reorg, so we've been getting our footing. So I'm really excited, you know, now that the team is, is fully up to speed, we're, we're running, that, you know, we've broken down the wall of, of client and agency. So we've been given, you know, kind of the thumbs up to, to run and, as Cindy said, test and learn, try new things. Um, it's, it's been a really exciting journey. And is the kitchen more about um, engagement and consumer feedback? So almost a, a live social panel that you guys are engaging with them a lot more actively than, say, buying media? Yes. Uh, they are they're fully social, so we are able to test and learn things on a much more one-to-one -one basis, um, and we'll continue to do that. They're also able to you know do reactive content a lot faster than we were able to do before. I think you know as an icon and, and wanting to build this brand love, the one really lovely thing has been as we have this new agents internal agency, we're able to move a lot more quickly. Um, on things that we see out in the world. So for example, back in June, we saw Chrissy Teigen had posted to her story a video of John Legend making Kraft Mac and Cheese. And she was shaming him because why was he making Kraft Mac and Cheese? She's Chrissy Teigen, she's you know, a cook. Um, and so his response was, don't craft shame me. And we were like, oh my gosh, this is gold. <laughs> like that's exactly what we want. We want people to be you know, defiantly joyful in their eating of Kraft Mac and Cheese. 
And so the team within, you know, a week and a half had a custom John Legend box made with his face on the front and it said, don't craft shame me. They completely rewrote the words to all of me to be all about craft mac and cheese, <laughs> shipped it to the, the Tegan Legend household, and we ended up getting, you know, 30 million eye, free eyeballs um, when Chrissy posted it to her story. So we're, we've been given kind of the thumbs That's up right, to yeah. do what makes sense for the brand and try new things, and I think we're, we're doing it. Things that you know, a legacy company like Kraft, uh, not necessarily uh, known for. So that's that's not fantastic. Not always as agile as we like yeah. to be. It's fantastic. There. It's good to see a behemoth moving fast. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's, it really is. that's impressive. Um, all right, a, a quick a quick question for as you're getting all of this feedback from um, from social users, and you already mentioned a couple of them that you see people doing all types of things with uh, with Kraft mac and cheese. Um, I'll, I'll give you my hack. I, I shared it with you a little bit, but you know, Kraft mac and cheese and then truffle salt. I'm, a, I'm a more of a savory than a sweet guy, but just you know, that's my hack. What's your favorite hack for mac and cheese, and or the most outlandish thing you've seen uh, done with mac and cheese? Yeah. So outside of the ice cream. I, say, <laughs> I am a true blue like eat out of the pot or the bowl, you guys. Like, yeah. don't say you don't do it. We all eat it out of the pot. <laughs> that That is actually my style of eating mac and cheese. But from consumers, I'd say it's really interesting how regional it gets. So people in different regions have what they think is their mac and cheese. And it, I mean, Canada puts tuna in it. Southern is a lot of breadcrumbs and meats in there, right? So a lot of spices come in. Um, it's really interesting to see the regionality, and then I think my, my other favorite is people just stuffing it and stuff. So like, I don't care if it's a hot dog, a hamburger, a grilled cheese, like they are putting mac and cheese in that thing, and I, I think it's brilliant actually. So, maybe making myself a grilled mac and cheese sandwich. <laughs> Absolutely. So my Mac hack is honestly something most people probably don't want to do, which is to measure the milk with your heart. Because um, I like a very ready mac and cheese, so like people argue it's like mac and cheese soup. It's not. It's delicious in my personal opinion. But um, you know the R and D scoop is that our best blue box blue box flavor is thick and creamy. So if you haven't tried thick and creamy yet, give it a try. It's very good. Um, and I'll give you one other mac hack that we recently posted um, on the kitchen account or on our social accounts. Um, if you like liquid mac and cheese, the key is after, when you're trying to put the liquid cheese in, because it's hard to get all the cheese out of the pouch, you like cut across the top of the foil, and then you set it on the side of the pot, and use your lid of your pot to get all the cheese out. Nice. Yeah, and if you need a visual representation, please go to Kraft Mac and Cheese's uh, TikTok account, um, and you will find it there. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm, I'm more of the I'm more of the thick. Uh, I'm lighter on the milk, but I, I do go with my heart on the butter. Uh, yeah. As you should. Well, you know. Um, how are we doing? Uh, let me take a quick pause. Um, questions from the the audience or Mac hacks? If you I don't. Do I need the mic? I don't okay, know. I'm Just shy. Um, so this is a really interesting and great idea. I'm just curious as you're broadening this brand, what the implications are for deluxe mac and cheese and barbita <coughs> shells and cheese, because I used to also work at Kraft. And they were very separate. So yeah. now, that, how do you ensure you're going to have incremental, yeah. you know? It's volume. a great question. And ironically, as I jumped on this desk, um, one of my biggest eye-opening ahas was why the heck are we not supporting deluxe? because it has so much potential. So for people that don't know, Deluxe is part of Kraft Mac and Cheese as the brand, but has kind of sat as a little bit of an ugly stepchild, like just has been ignored. It's the squeezy liquid cheese, like a Velveeta, but a very different flavor profile. So there's two things. One is we're going to bring Deluxe into the Kraft Mac and Cheese brand, so that you suddenly become a brand. Um, two, both from a emotional and a functional standpoint, Vel and Deluxe sit quite differently for consumers. So Velveeta, you know, love it or hate it, it comes across as very processed, a very distinct mm -hmm. taste, and people that love it absolutely love it. And we have refreshed that brand as well, so that is a much more um, indulgent, satisfying, right? Like people that legit don't care what they eat, and they're like, I'm going all in for like rich, heavy taste. It's gonna be amazing. That's what the role Bell plays. 
whereas deluxe will ladder up to comfort, right? This kind of like positive power of comfort and it has a very different flavor profile from the cheese, different shells, and it's used a bit differently. So it's much more recipe-based families, right? Mm -hmm. Center of plate at dinner, that kind of thing. Okay. And we will touch Cracker Barrel. It's <laughs> <laughs> my other goal, guys, Cracker Barrel. Keep blowing shit up, I like that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Just a quick question. Um, first of all, I'm a mom. Well, I could talk about mac and cheese all day. I was just I fight with my husband about the milk, um, <laughs> how much goes in and the butter. But um, how do you guys view the threat a little bit of the bloggers, the influencers that constantly rail on what's in our food? Um, is a mom bombarded by all of it? And so the guilt sits there because you're like, oh, God, I shouldn't be doing this, but it's so good. Yeah. But, you know, I'm just interested how you guys sort of, and maybe the social agency can help now that it's more reactive. Um, that's an interesting part of this, I think, too. Yeah, it's um, having worked in CPG most of my career, actually probably all of my career, um, it's, it's a common thing that we, every couple of years, it comes up on the next brand you're working on, right? I worked on Tropicana at the time when sugar was a horrible right. thing. Mm -hmm. It was like, oh god, what do we do now, right? It's all sugar. So for mac and cheese specifically, well, for the company, but talking about my brand, we have done consumer segmentation. So there is a role for different products and brands in everyone's lives, right? Someone that is only eating organic, plant-based is never going to be my consumer, and that's okay. So we are very focused on our consumer segments that we know love it. I mean, right now we're sitting on a $2 billion mac and cheese portfolio that continues to grow. <laughs> so there's a role for it. I think a lot of times what we hear from consumers is they like to say that they don't want to eat it, but then they eat it, right? It's, it's beautiful when you get to the end of a focus group and you realize like they were kind of BSing the whole time. <laughs> so um, we're really focused on just like that segmentation. I don't think I've ever seen a focus group outcome that didn't say everybody eats healthy. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ken Shack. Uh, Sunia, this isn't so much a question as, as uh, some first party data since you mentioned that that was something that was lacking, but as a father of three with three under seven, and I think there's a few of us that ever in similar situations, about half my week is leftover mac and cheese from whatever the kids did eat. <laughs> And so it's either my wife and I fighting over what's left in the bowl because that's what we're going to have for dinner that night or whatever's the kids left over. And I think there just might be something there to market to the, the parents in, in that angle. <laughs> yeah, that's cute. I like that idea. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. um, that <laughs> exactly the thought process, right? Parents will say, I, I just sneak like a couple spoonfuls or like whatever's left in the pot. So how do we, you know, we, we talk about being a brand for everybody we need to have products and occasions focused on everybody. So that, it's part of the strategy for sure. And if you love it, it is like the lowest price you're ever going to see at Costco, just saying. <laughs> right now, 2020. Uh, you bring up a, not on the cost side, but on the, on the comfort and just thinking about economic times right now and you know, everyone getting stretched a little bit, which can be good for CPG um, in general. If, if folks eat out less, a little bit bad for the on-premise folks. But, um, but you know, looking at looking at the brand and folks needing more comfort, coming out of COVID, tough economic times, not fortuitous, but you know, now is the time to be out with a comfort message. You look at all the brands that won during the 08 recession. It was all emotive, comfort-driven brands who had that messaging in the marketplace. Um, you know, sorry, are you guys speeding up because of that? Or is it still, you know, we're pretty set and things are rolling as they get ready? Yeah, I have to say it was coincidental that one of the biggest macro trends right now is about comfort. So if you think like people want comfort during COVID, they're all eating mac and cheese, right? They want convenience, they want value in a recession. And that just plays in really well to our brand. So we were in the comfort space before the COVID <laughs> drama started. Um, so I think it's more coincidental that we are going to be there, but I also think it will be relevant ongoing because it is a comfort food, right? And as we talk about, there's, it's literally a box of like a thousand smiles, right? Like it's just an uplifting, fun brand to work on and product. So it's going to bring that 
uplifting comfort to people. And I think that will have legs that we can run with for a very long time because there's a lot of ways that that can evolve in consumers' lives. Very good. Very good. And, you know, you guys had the, the spiral notebook on the side for, for years, right? Uh, kind of announcing some of those some of those traits and trends um, to the health side and trying to be kind of forward. Is that foregone that consumers know that? Moms know that now? Or is it uh, something you're going to need the comms team to double down on to make sure that it, it stays relevant? Yeah, it's really surprising because if you look at the packaging, the left side, it's really big. On the new box, it sits up at the top. Consumers all caught it on the new box. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they legit just bypass the notebook page. It's like kid stuff, here we go, my kid will eat it. And they've all missed <laughs> the messaging. It, it's really shocking how many people don't know that it truly is free of dyes, artificial, all that. Very good. All right, well, we're at time. So thank you guys so much. Thank you. Appreciate it.